What I can say is that I think we're a fun team. And I think it reached a point where I think we are an almost perfect team in terms of individuals, balance. I think that perfection is not when there's nothing to add. I think perfection is when there's nothing to remove. And I wouldn't remove anything in this team. And we are about to play games where it matters a lot. If we win these games, we can continue playing together, right? And that means a lot to me. So, yeah, I wish we can continue playing together. One, two, three, Undefeated, roll up to the grand finals, awaiting for the final challenge. One step away from VCT EMEA. When Einar came to me with the idea of uh, launching a Valorant team in the middle of uh, like a struggling economy in the esports scene. Just a little bit of craziness from him, you know, he was a pretty recent uh, hiring for us at the time and immediately uh, coming with the idea that we should enter a, a new game with a significant budget and try to put our mark on the esports scene was quite ambitious. But, you know, we, through a lot of different discussions, saw some good reasons as to why he came up with that idea. My name is Einar, I'm a business development manager at Apex. Entering Valorant was mainly my idea, but also a result of different talks and discussions we had had at the office. It tied well into some of the business and strategies that we had for the organizations as a whole. With this whole project, going over Valorant as a whole, how we see it, how we structure it. It's a very ambitious project, it's a big goal. We start off in the regional league called Polaris, a Northern Europe league basically. The goal is pretty straightforward, we want to be in VCT. In order to do so, we have to win our own league, then we qualify for Ascension. And moving up in Ascension, there's going to be only one spot available to qualify for VCT. There's like around 100 teams competing in uh, Europe. There's only one team that makes it, right? We knew from the, like, the get-go that this is an incredibly high risk to take. You're building something to just be the absolute best and the only team that qualifies. And you know, obviously all of the stories that comes with being that one team that makes it. When we started building the roster, we knew that we wanted to start with a coach and an IGL and have that as the core that we built from. That proved more difficult than we anticipated. IGLs were few and far in between at the time and we didn't have many coaching options either until a name started popping up and reappearing on our radar which was Itopata. We reached out to him, he was currently a coach at uh, TSM. We connected with him, we found out that we had a very similar philosophy when it came to building the roster. So we quickly started to work with him and we also quickly saw Magnum as a very high, high skilled player that would be available for us. And those were the two core people involved in, in building the roster. It got quite stressful, not gonna lie, mainly because we had uh, limited options to, to the Polaris role and uh, Villar role, that you need to have the three players from the, the, uh, the region uh, where you play. But Rai, Spikey and Ito were really open to me and they really trusted me, so it felt quite nice. We had to have three local uh, Polaris players, so that was a bit of a, a puzzle. Very early on in the project, I reached out to Doombros, the head coach of Navi, and I asked him about his opinion on certain players that we had within our scope. He brought up a name, Kix, uh, who was a very young, talented player uh, playing on Bonk at the time. So I started watching a lot of Bonk's old uh, matches. While watching Bonk mainly for kicks, uh, I noticed Kiko, which was an incredible player and was a Polaris player. I feel like uh, with Apex, it's a sort of family org, and everyone's everyone cares about each other. Everyone's together compared to the other orgs. It's a lot better than having the management not care about you. I want to win the Ascension and prove to everyone that we. We are the favorites, and we were favorites for a reason. 
We reached out to Kiko and Kiko ended up being the first player that we officially signed to the roster. After getting the budget goal for the whole project, it started with probably one of the most hectic periods we have had in the club. We spent so much time, long evenings. We didn't plan our entry into Valorant for like a long time. Um, we just saw the opportunity and was able to react quite quickly and put together an incredibly good team in a short amount of time. We both knew at the time we had secured a lineup that definitely deserved to be in the partner league. Hello and welcome to the first game of the second day here at Polaris. We have Apex against Human Tripwires, the game that I think MB a lot of people have been looking forward to simply because it's the first time we're going to have an opportunity to have a look at this Apex roster in real time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Apex, they look really look like a really, really strong roster and I would say really close to tier 1 roster and a lot of talent in this roster. I'm so excited to see what they have in offer. This round, it's do or die and not a single mistake is coming out from Apex. Epps left all by himself. This is it! Mystic closes it out 2-0 for Apex on their first showing here at Polaris. They're the winners of the match! Split one, with the first time the teams got together. We had, I think, maybe one or two weeks between we formed and our first official. Yeah, we didn't have a lot of time, but I think the fact that we meshed so well together in the beginning really helped out because it felt like we were able to rely on each other a little bit more. It was a good phase within the team. Like, we were rolling and I, I mean, like, we all had this drive to, and same goal to win, 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 and win Ascension and make it to, BCT. Uh, yeah. We started split one with a bootcamp to meet everyone and that was a really productive bootcamp because you, you, you meet each other and the first time you play together in the team is actually in the bootcamp. You have to start from zero and when you start from nothing in a team you have to build everything. So you have to build the game plan, you have to build the basics, you have to create the protocols for every possible reaction to things in game. It's a lot of things that you have to build and it's, uh, it's really good because every day there's something new. That's what Split One was about. It's about building the team, the foundation of the team. We took it game by game. We prepared for every opponent in a very basic way that we have developed afterwards. And uh, everyone brought his own piece to the machine. Is that how we say it? I could say it like that. Yeah, everyone, everyone brought his piece of cake to the machine. That's, that's what I'm gonna call it. It's a 5 versus 5 skirmish to close. Look at the alts LPB have encounter yeah. though. A lockdown of their own, a Hunter's Fury, and a Blade Storm if you just want to toss it to the wayside and get rid of those kings that we spoke of. Here we go. Vong with the ult even taking Mystic low HP. Kiko trying to trade it out, but still the Sova continues to fire off. Only Magnum remains has a Killjoy ult of their own, and well, there's no counter to worry about this time, but there is a hell of a lot sitting in front of you. LPB looking to put a dampener on the victory parade, and they will do exactly that. The clowns take center stage, and it seems as if the pecking order, and the order of the food chain, will be assembling just a little bit. No props left. Pick a start was kind of expected by everyone, I guess, uh, since it was first bootcamp together. It, we didn't have much time to prepare. Obviously, it was kind of weird losing two underdogs at that time, but I think it gave, gave us a lot, and I think it's uh, important to lose, uh, especially on the start, because you, you learn how does it feel to lose together. I think that's due to, like, everyone's new to each other, like, you need to get the team playing, you need to play together, and also I think it's important to actually have like shaky games sometimes to, so you can look back and see what went wrong and uh, improve on that. Kayo, Garden, Fade Garden. The Kayo knife, very close to that. If you plant open, you win this shit. Like behind the bricks. Stick expecting a flash. That's why you can see he's obviously... Plant behind the bricks, no. Oh my god. Well, that's... Uh, open plant for everything. No you can okay, win mate. that, boys. Can you smoke that? Yeah, I'm doing a one-way intro. You can flank shot if you want. Mystic, if you go now, it's good. He's planted for you, shot. I love this plan. It's so open. Yugi's gonna be oh, taken. Oh, like now. Play much like you can. Nice. Oh. Last shot. It's planted for I you, you Mystic. Stay alive. I'm playing time. He's dead. Just play time. Don't die, Mystic. Nice. <laughs> Let's go, boys. It's really good. It's really, really good. 
world. And damn do they defy the odds. Apex are in their peak. 12-1, map point and series point. That is a ludicrous clutch. And for our playoffs of Split 1, we went back into a bootcamp. And you can see a massive difference between the first bootcamp and the second bootcamp, which is playoffs. Time playing the Split 1 finals, uh, it was high pressure moments, of course. But we really cared about that, because in Ohrets, it's uh, one step into the ascension. I mean, we treated it as a each, each match, but uh, in, in back of our minds, we knew that we kind of need to win if we want to qualify to ascension. And right now, at this time, we know it's a big advantage for us. It was the first time that the games really mattered to the team. If we lose them, it's really bad. If we win them, it's really good. So it's uh, quite a lot of pressure. And uh, I think the team handled that pressure a lot, uh, really well, actually. Because we have experienced players, but also because we created that structure in the team and with the players that allow them to face these challenges. Even if it wasn't a VCT playoffs or anything, it was actually quite challenging and uh, we all pushed ourselves to not to our limits, but to our highest level, you know? I think what I remember the most is the finals against Focus, which we win 3-1. And uh, I remember uh, it's a final that we won on Haven. Everyone was really on fire that day. It was a great way to conclude speed number one. Yeah. Magnum can have a real good impact here when it comes to this backstab. You can hear all the commotion and that's two kills. Hold heaven, hold heaven, guys. I hold heaven, I hold heaven. Don't worry, guys. One more. I stun it, I stun it. Nice. Yes! Let's go. Holy shit. Okay, ready, guys. My job as an IGL and also my job as a player is to always uplift my teammates around me and enable them, whether it's in-game or outside of the game. I think a team has to be a super open space for everyone. What I mean is that every player should be able to speak his mind and to speak his emotions to each other in a very, very, very open manner. Your team should be maybe the most open space you have in your life. Like, you should be able to say absolutely everything that's on your mind, without any judgment. Obviously, as, as long as you say it in a good way and not in a very harsh way or anything. Like, it has to be positive no matter what. I think the main difference is that there is not the punching back in this team. Uh, everyone is responsible for their own mistakes and we don't throw mistakes at, at one guy. We usually treat it as a team. I think as well that there is no differences between Wu's friend with Wu. We, we just treat each other, I think, everyone the same. And yeah, uh, that's, the, that's the best thing about this team for sure. Either the finals were online and we go to Oslo in bootcamp and we do our finals just like speed number one, the playoffs, and that we are used to it, yeah. Second option, we go to London and we play at the LAN event here and it's going to be a new environment for us and there will be a little bit of crowd next to us and obviously not the, the biggest stage ever, right? But it's still a small stage with uh, people watching and that kind of atmosphere of competition where you can actually see your opponents and uh, and shout at them, you know? So I, I knew that this was going to be a challenge for the team, but whenever I see a challenge, I, I like to embrace it. So I think that was a good thing that there was a land for the event. I think that was a really good thing because we got to feel as a team the pressure of what a, a LAN event with a crowd is, even if it's a small one. And I insist on as a team, because when you experiment this thing individually, you learn for yourself and stuff. But when you experience this as a team, then the team grows and everyone in the team learns on how to face this challenge. And now that we have to get ready for Ascension, I know that this event is going to help us for Ascension, because when we're going to be in the Berlin stage in Ascension, everyone is going to be ready for that, because we have faced it already that challenge, you know, of, you know, playing on stage together with a small crowd and everything. We're all a family here and everyone on the team. We all have good personalities. We're all laughing and joking with each other. We're all friends and it's never a bad mood. Everyone's great here. Like everyone 
is always trying to push each other to you know, achieve greatness. We're trying to build up from the ground and really achieve the highest levels that we can even dream of. I wouldn't wish to go to Ascension with anyone else because I really believe in them. I feel like we're, we're really capable of making it. I'd be really happy if Apex got into Ascension because I know the, how much that it means to everyone. We're all here for a reason. We're all here to, to prove people wrong. First game of Split 2 playoff. We came into that game very prepared. I feel like the week leading up to it, it was like shaking off nerves or fixing the small problems that we have. And like going into that, that game, personally, I felt very confident. I think the team was also feeling the same way. I think we were able to trust each other and rely on each other, which was definitely a nice feeling. Like, especially from the first round, I already felt like we were instantly the better team. Like I could tell like the focus players, that just by the way they were playing, they were not ready for us. That was great because I felt kind of unstoppable. <laughs> I was just uh, shooting heads and getting kills. Have some fun, guys. Keep it really simple. Adapt to whatever they have. And then we just fuck them. Fight together, fight. Go with the one, two, three, like the three, two, one. This. Just set up the pace and fuck them. As we do head in now, 30 seconds away from this first game of the Polaris playoffs. Split two between the two teams that perhaps you're expecting to see right until the very end the Sage Wall up and Kiko will begin proceedings. Finds Waddle as the smoke's gone. The A illusion now fading. Focus perhaps needing to inject a little bit of pace on this B execute and they will send it over the wall. Yeah, already though, Kiko has gone massive. The first three picks between this duel has been won out by the Jet. Your boy Lewis gets back in on the action, but Apex wiped them out on the attack. The pistol round, which had been so important for Focus, goes in Apex favour. And unfortunately for Focus, the only players that they could take are in ramp elsewhere. The ramp players have now arrived. They're increasing the speed of which they attack. It is Magnum on the site, but Lime ultimately to find the kill. Shadow 1v3. What a pickup this has been from Focus. It's the first time we've seen them take a site with an advantage firmly in their favour. Not being lost immediately as Shadow puts in some of their own work. Finds the first. Time's still ticking away and now they've just doubled up. The Phantom Spray. I mean, so much. Oh, 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 the oh, oh, and Shadow oh, takes the move. Oh, oh, oh. Players are already taking engagements. Apex ready and lying in wait. The crossfires, the utility. It's all been sent oh, forward. Oh, oh, oh. And Mystic's on for the A's. And oh, we'll find it. Oh, oh. Absolutely magnificent from Apex so far. That's going to be massive for retaking me. That is a real a massive in contention point. Could upset. Apex is post plan and focus of found picks left, right, and centre. It's now all up to Shadow. Oh. 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 What I mean is be ready for some resistance because now what they're gonna say is let's fight, let's punch them, you know? Yeah. So they're gonna be more uh, dynamic and shit and they're gonna fight. Let's go, boys. Let's fucking go. One, two, Apex. One, two, three, But I mean, no time wasted. As they were saying on the desk, LPB, they'll be preying on the downfall of Apex just a little bit, but Focus will have to show us a real step up on this map. Shadow is still alive. He cannot be cloaked by the darkness, it seems, and is looking for another clutch to pull this one apart. First kill onto Lime, and we'll just turn away. Invites one oh, to oh, fight oh, head on, oh. and as they lock horns, it's another Pringles crunch. They barely show their weakness in every single time that they do. Mm. They make amends. They amends this time. Your boy lose out. So is Lime. They're oh, just cutting wow. them down. It's pure domination so far. And that's exactly how they want to end the ruling of this region. End the ruling of focus. It will be 2-0 towards Apex. A perfect start to the playoff day. Yeah. Crowds gathered in the Red Bull game. Thinking about Saturday, we played two games, one after the other, of an hour break. Coming up against LPB, we knew that they would have been watching us. They would have been, you know, giving it the role, especially coming in as an unsigned team. They need to prove themselves here. They need to perform in order to, you know, otherwise their season would be over there and then. We were expecting a bit of a battle. And I'd say our first map, we were looking quite comfortable. I think we prepped quite well. It's going to be a fast ball. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Everyone ready? Yeah. 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 Apex like. Apex like. One, two. One, two. Hey, 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 go fly! <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> As the Pringles stay in the game starts and Pistol Round comes in for Lefty Buffon and Apex. 
and Fong is going absolutely wild. Kick that one off first frag. The rest of the team starts to back off here, but now the chance to dash on forward. You see Luz already looking to get that space alongside Prey, but with a good couple of frags, Tiku actually managed to trade back. It ends in a two versus two. Makes that one versus two as some great damage goes through and with Russ. Russ, six HP, only one shot all oh, my days. Okay. Let's go! Let's a rough situation for Avex still. Yeah, I mean, they're a player down. Their economy is not amazing. I mean, they didn't invest a huge amount into this. It's going to be a bit fire from the next round, but it's going to be some real pretty prey that's going to bring it. And Magnum delivers just that three versus three now. And they know where Enzo is. As Enzo, Enzo goes to the crossing craze position, known as well as they're going to start to step up towards this. They deal with Luzza. There's they no deal way. with Link. And then there was one. They're able to upgrade their weapons. And Cray now has to be worried about the lockdown even invested. So it's going to either have to hold or step forward. You see, rounding the corner is that shot. Enzo tries to go for the oh, way. Magnum that gets the 4K and Apex off the, a pretty ramshackle by ram through their opponents and take map one. The, the second map, it was a bit shaky from us, but we managed to scrape the win. We pulled back from, we were down like 11-9 or something. As a team, we were able to collect our minds and make sure that we were focused and get that, got that Indeed. W. Things to switch out here. Buzzer dives deep onto the side. Magnum played close to their nano swamp. No one's checking for them. Waiting in the nano swamp, taking the damage, spraying down, but doesn't quite kill anyone. Everything is looking up Apex right now. They can lock it. They can close it out here. It's all down to the remaining members of LTV, especially those on site. Lander's Truth and Vong tries to catch as they move on in. Wants to get that damage, but look at it. The players, the blue, is lighting up the scoreboard right now. It's lots of I think all the games in the group stage of the playoff so the, the two first games against Focus and LPB that we won 2-0, we were quite in control, I remember. We did get challenged a little bit by LPB at one point, but um, we found a solution and after every single game, we debrief super fast and then we move on to the second map. I felt like the whole team kept on adapting and learning to this new environment. Because you know when you play on stage and, and when it's a game that matters a lot, everything changes. Pressure can do so many things to, to a player. It can do many bad things, it can also do many good things. Like you can, you can become so good just because of pressure. After that we had uh, the Grand Finals against Focus. Obviously we wanted LPB to, to win because if LPB wins we are straight to Ascension. But Focus won and once again you're back into a game where if you lose, everything changes. That's what defines a pressure game. It doesn't matter how many Vitos we get, how many they get, they can pick all the maps they want, we're still gonna beat them. I believe in every single one of you. The whole playoffs, we got told that there was a specific format with a BO5 in the end where the winning team has two Vitos. You can ban two maps basically. But then a team could not attend the event and they changed the format into a three teams format without really updating what happens for the final game, the BO5. So even Focus, they thought that we would veto, veto two maps, right? So it was a surprise for them and us that we could actually veto only one map. And it changed everything for our preparation because we prepared the game for a two maps veto. And we got told five minutes before the game. Basically, when we did the veto, the admins told us, no, you have one veto each. And whatever you feel, if you feel stressed a little bit, it's normal. So don't be afraid of taking space, do simple things and fucking punch them in the face. No hesitation, fast pace, they're gonna shoot the fucking wall and we shoot their heads. It's gonna be insane. And just have fun guys, honestly guys, have fun. Yeah. Like, this is our first round final, so but it won't be the last. The moment we've all been waiting for, it's finally here. A best of five to see who will be making a section, who will be going to play-ins and all the bits in between. Of course, it's Apex, it's Focus. Apex, we'll need to search for them and in fact they find Yugi. Oh, that's his oh, oh my god. My god. The gold standard from the corner. Three headshots. Lime can take one back himself, but it's a 1v5. Almost in the middle of an ocean of Apex oh, players. Oh, oh, oh. 13 to 12, and Focus have a chance to draw this over the line. They head straight in towards the site, and it's Lime Ooh. with a TP that gets the entry. <laughs> Mystic's at least able to get the equilibrium restored. A lot of utility sent, and that's that. They're just straight away on towards B. Now Magnum has to come up huge. 
Oh, that's what he did last time. It was a sinking blow. He sits beneath. No the way! Walk through. They haven't cleared it. Finally, they will. Enzo has arrived. It's a three versus two. And all of a sudden, focus backpedaling. KPZ. Angel up on heaven. The ultimate straight away invested for Lime. Trying to take the space. Trying to take the information. And it's going straight to Lamps. KPZ is back in the corner. He spotted both players and needs to help out in support. Maybe it's not required. KPZ looks to do everything on his own. Determined to be the storyteller. The first game was a rough start. We had obviously a lot of technical issues, I think, on that first game. That didn't help the team at all. I think everyone was a bit on edge with the build up towards that game. We still took them to overtime, but Realistically, I think we should have closed that game out. Moving forward, I got my PC changed. I was a bit happier in a, mentally. I feel like one issue was sorted. And yeah, like I felt like it was a bit of a reset for us. We're gonna win Ascension one way or another. This game here is just a short trip to Ascension for us. It's nothing more. Just loosen up and play your game. Just have fun. Let's get into it. Map number two getting underway under the seas of Portugal. Lime now needs to come up with something special. Spike is down in the last two remaining players for Apex and NCT. First tap comes through, looking for a peak, finds Kiko. A 1v1 scenario. Lime taps it again, still doesn't have the confidence to take on the monster that is Enzo in these positions. Peak in the corner, he lands the headshot and finds the kill. Pistol round goes Apex way. I looked over it thoroughly. Uh, but yeah, right now, it's if Focus want Ascension, they need two more maps. This one being Apex pick. Just quite a little chef away. This lockdown looks to get the Kiko, Yeah, he's going to be stuck in a bad spot. Look to stay for one, isn't going to get it. Magnum gets KPZ in the middle clean. of connector. And that's to actually drawing your boy Lewis away. It's more the on site that we need to be no, thinking about. Up, no, in. maybe not. Your me. boy Lewis now in towards the lane spot. Oh. And that is going to be the end of the map. I didn't even realise. Yeah, we're all done here in map two. So we go into the third game. Lotus, feeling confident. There was still some mistakes being made. I think it even shown from round one. We are in a 4v1 on pissed around. We read them like a book, we destroyed them. And your boy Lewis won a 1v4. Like, life round from him. <laughs> Apex, they come around the backside and they find the kills all up to Lewis. He needs to be the headshot machine. We know he's capable of here and maybe he might be. One more to find, it's Keith oh! going, he'll get it! An ace on the pistol round! The King without the throne stakes his claim! Lewis is back! We were also making some sloppy mistakes. Luckily, we were able to win that game in overtime. Magnum has the numbers as well. Someone needs to call a doctor because focus. They're choking right at the pivotal point. Everything being played for. The nanos are there. Through comes KPZ, but he is immediately dealt with. All on the shoulders of line, and it will not happen. Apex administer another lethal dosage to which nobody seems to have the cure. We for sure knew that we need to step up for this fourth game in order to, to win. Before Haven, we got told we had a 13 minutes break. All of us went back into the, the boot camp, which is next to the venue. It's a power. He definitely recognized that. It was like, boys, go listen to Peter's recording. Go calm yourselves down. Reset your mental and go into this fourth game with an open mindset. 10 minute recording our performance coach made for us. We were using this as like a way to relieve the stress, to relieve the anxiety, and it was it worked really well for me, actually. And I felt, you know, calm. I, felt, I was thinking about, like, I've been in so many times. Like, there's no stress. There's no stress needed. One of the reasons why I think I played so well in the map four, because I felt so relaxed. Something switched in the team. We went into that fourth game, and I'm telling you now, it's the best Valorant I think us as a team have ever played, or even any team has ever played. Like, the trust that we had in our teammates, there's no errors to be made at all. The rest of the players are making their way over. You've got to watch out for Enzo, just locking in the back lanes, looking to support from long. Well, it's going to be Kiko supporting themselves with the picks. Mystic Hayden in the corner is building up and building up, and the players still haven't checked the corners. Something has happened many a many a time for the side of Apex. And look at this. It all comes down to Mystic to close out the round. Now they scale up on a long. There's still a KG set up. Enzo goes by in a jump spot from Mystic. There we go. Focus starting to move in. 
Shark encircling its prey. Magnum happy to just take all the damage in the corner. They walk through and the battering ramp begins. It's a pinstripe kill feed. Apex just in front. A 2v2. Things level out. To the notes, all about how folk is set up, trying to get themselves in a position to get something back. He goes on the blades. Shadow also doesn't have much utility. Stun just came on though. To so set him up, spots the first, knows that he's under. Wants to move in off the back of it, has the blades available, looking to get it done here and now. The nanos, they can delay, perhaps allow a reposition for Lime. It comes down to these fights, and they're out in the open. They're hard drawn and quartered. Apex will find it. Back to back, the brightest in Borealis, an aurora befitting of the international stage. Ex Apex exercise. It felt super, super nice going into that game and experiencing uh, that high level Valorant. Honestly, that was the highest level of Valorant I've played ever in any team, and we just crushed them. We just crushed them. Plans for Ascension, yeah? Win group stage, win playoffs, Ascend. <laughs> this one you can keep if it works. Uh, maybe it doesn't. Stakes are high now. It's um, only one team goes through. We need to go into this event with idea to treat every game the same. No slacking, give everything that you've got. It's not going to be easy. Although we have this uh, title above our head of like being like the strongest team and coming into this event, we know what Valorant's like. Any team can lose if it's you know if we have our bad day and they have their good day. I think as a player, you carry your experience from all the past events, all the past teams, all the past games, all the mistakes you've made, everything you've learned. All of that you carry with you and it allows you to bring it into your team and share that experience and build something stronger. In this team, it's a balanced team, everyone has his own role, everyone contributes a lot and I think it's also my role to allow them to say what they want to say, to share what they want to share and by doing that we all enable each other and we all improve in-game, outside of the game, as persons, as players, and, and that's what I want to build in the team, and that's what we are building now. Yeah, much better. But this game was, it wasn't even, I don't know. What was the difference between the first map and the uh, first game and the second game? Attack started really good, actually. Yeah, we just got some momentum on the top, I think, in the first game. But uh, this, this game was just... I don't know, they overrun us. Like they did it on the first pack as well. Like they, they went one side and just overrun us. I think we need to start more with 1-3-1 one, one, and we need to flood on this. We need to fi fight that. Yeah, we need, we need to, to more, take uh, back the space. Like if they take A... More dynamic as well. Yeah, like we need uh, to fight them more because we're not fighting. Like if they take back, take A, we go and fight them. We go and go and like... Yeah, like actually. They did and we fight them. Yeah. Are you hitting your shots? No, we fight. No, we're not. <laughs> we're fight <laughs> not, not this game. The one before, yeah, but not this yeah. game. But we need something? we need to bring the fight to them. I mean, I got I got something already. No, you, you have something else. No, yeah, I got something else. It's uh, something uh, you don't have to drink. It's uh, just something you have to. We just gotta stand up, and it takes about one and a half minutes. It's just uh, a. Oh, it could be no. It's a. <laughs> it's an eye hand coordination exercise. Okay, stand like this, thumbs up, and uh, move your thumbs to, uh, to, towards your eyes, so you can barely, uh, just exactly see your thumbs. It's probably going to be a little different from uh, both. And then move your thumbs a little bit up, and keep your eyes locked on the thumbs, so you can barely see them. I think we had a good preparation, we're feeling confident, the team is feeling confident as well. I can feel it in the practice, I can feel the energy. We've been playing for 20 days in a row right now, without a break really, and we know it's like the last run of the year. Yeah, we feel ready. Uh, I can feel that this event is going to be something special. Magnum. Magnum. Oh, shit. <laughs> He asked you a question. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Real bad. Uh, tomorrow is scrims. We have game tomorrow. Um, and I believe we're gonna shake it off. So... 
should be fine. I think we always have something to prove. No matter what, you always have something to prove. Even if you're in VCT, you have to prove that uh, you're one of the best teams in VCT. And when you're in VCT, and even if you win uh, in your own region, you have to prove that you're the best in the world. And even when you have nothing to prove because you won everything, you have something to prove to yourself that you can continue, that you can perform at a high level. So it's, you always have something to prove no matter what. So during the off season, obviously I wanted to join a VCT team. That was the goal for me because of the way some teams were uh, built during the league because of many external things that you cannot really control. We ended up in uh, the Polaris League, but you know, I think I just took it as a challenge. I think all of us here, we took it as a challenge. Actually, most of the time, life is gonna strike you down, you know? Uh, that's how it is. But uh, you just uh, stand back up, fight, you take it as a challenge and you set some goals step by step. It wasn't really a, a bad thing, I would say, because I can say that this year is the year where I learned the most as a player. So I think it's worth it, no matter what the outcome is. This weekend we have the playoffs on stage and no matter what the outcome is, I know that all of us here, we learned so much as players and this year was worth it, no matter what. We go through the smoke just like on ascent. No, no, do what Mystic said, do what Mystic said. Let me take the wall, hold me, hold me, hold me. All right, guys, 1-3-1 one, anti eco step by step and I have rest. So take risks together and again, be proactive together. I am not with you, you're the core, be proactive, okay? The screen was good. I think we played really well. It's the last screen before tomorrow's official. I'm really happy because for me that was a reference for tomorrow. It was super dynamic, a lot of fighting, a lot of... It was very efficient, so I'm really happy. And if we can repeat that tomorrow, it's gonna be super easy. Like, I'm really happy to end today on a good note like this, where uh, we play to our potential because then we can copy-paste this for tomorrow with even more energy because tomorrow we're going to have a lot of energy for sure. So I'm really happy and now we just take a small break. We go walk out with everyone. Uh, the, yeah, we go out of the, the chalk and everyone goes everywhere. What's the animal? Like the, with the tentacles, yeah? With the octopus strat. <laughs> the octopus is when you go on a site and everybody spreads out and then you just die one, one, one. That's the octopus. And that's what, what, that's what you should not do on Valorant. And now we're gonna review, and we're gonna see today, game two, we did a lot of octopus. It's full of octopus. So we've been working with the players with their uh, in-game communications and uh, how they talk to each other, uh, how they structure their comps, as well as some uh, visualization and hypnosis work to work directly to the unconscious mind. Because what happens when you when you practice like these guys does, uh, is that they might develop unconscious habits that aren't as optimized as they could be, but they feel right. So when we're dealing with that, we're actually dealing with a gap between what we want them to do and what they feel is the right thing to do. So in order to close that gap, we need to work with the unconscious mind and um, that's, that's why we use visualization and hypnosis. Tomorrow you're gonna have a jersey on you and it's gonna be warm. So notice how the jersey feels on your body. It might be itchy. It might feel sweaty and it's like it's stuck to your body. And through the sound of the crowd, we do the team huddle. Listen up guys, this is just another day at the office. We're just here to play our game. Have clear and calm comms. And the result of that work is winning. And as we talk, we feel lights flashing in your eyes. Blinding lights, you're blinded from all the lights around you. It's difficult to do your game right now and the heat from the lights is so warm. It's terrible. Imagine how warm it would be like if the sweat just didn't stop dripping from your forehead. So we start Haven defense, Lotus defense, split defense. I mean, we so go just for Haven, no? Yeah, just through Haven. Yeah. A bit of focus on Haven, I know. I'm only speaking about Haven right now, that's it. That's short. Long, long, long. A lobby, A lobby, he's running A lobby. He'll reach out to him. Fuyo! 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 Fuyo, James! You have to go in five minutes. It's for what? For Yinsu. Interview. Oh. Fuyo! Fuyo! Welcome home? 
Thank you. Kind of a home for you, you know? Kind of. Like, I'm a bit of a football. Feels, but... like, feels like uh, you know, you've been uh, away from home a little bit it this has. season. So, uh... Mystic, welcome home. You know, it's been a while since we've seen you here. Uh, for me, it, it feels like a homecoming. How do you feel? What's it like to uh, be back here competing on stage? It feels great. I mean, I'm back at home. You know, I've been grinding this whole year, trying to get back to this position. And yeah, like seeing everyone's familiar faces and this kind of similar atmosphere is, is a great feeling, you know, so. We knew what they were gonna ban. They always ban Pearl. Usually when it goes the way you expected, it means you did a good veto because we got the maps we wanted. And now we're just gonna go and talk about these maps and then play <laughs> play on stage. A few reminders on their attack, yeah? The Ferrari A. Eh? You see the Molly in the sky. Okay? Keep Joy Molly from long. Yeah? Insta. Yeah. Play it just like the prac we just played, yeah? Just like the prac we just played. Faster, they told us we need to go now. Okay. The basics. And please if we do Navi, the three guys be everything together. And do what I said for the last two days. You can go pick close B, hide again. Do nothing, pick close B, hide again. But together, yeah? You win the games I cast. I might have to do one. Meow! <laughs> I cast your last game? Yeah, I think you cast it last game. That would be then. That would be when I cast it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be. That's his cast, casted game. Yeah, I can't remember that game. Yeah, yeah, neither can I. I'm sure. I can. <laughs> I can remember it. My relationship with Enzo is like, he's like my brother. Yeah. Oh, wait. What is it? Come see me. Yeah. Or I come see you. Yeah. I met Enzo back in 2020, uh, late 2020, I think, when we were initially building the Alliance roster. He was the first person, we did 10-man trials. It was a pretty controversial system at the time. And you know, we were just looking for someone who had that had everything to glue a team together. The, the charisma, the knowledge of the game, the potential as an individual, it was so hard to find. And when we ran across Enzo, something about him, you know, no matter what situation you put this guy in, he wouldn't break mentally, he wouldn't tilt, he wouldn't get angry. He was always just trying to win the game and, and get the most out of his teammates. And from that moment forward, I became a massive fan of him. I mean, that, that's why I've shown him so much support, not just because of his professional level, but also, you know, behind the scenes, he is just the nicest guy you could ever hope to work with. I, bro, bro, I was screaming was, at the TV, you hear his steps, you hear his steps, and then you went, Bruh. I'm like, yeah! And I killed him. He heard him. Bro, 20 seconds of Odin fight. Yeah. It must yeah. have been so stupid. Like two guys. Oh, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> what, what the fuck? I don't know if you heard the cast for that, but I was literally no, no, going, no, I heard nothing. On, no, I, was, really? I literally said, yeah. the I, I, know, like, I don't know, I heard crazy. nothing. Yeah, listen, I'm uh, I'm ready for a pretty objective, pretty unbiased oh, yeah. cast here. And look, if you remember all the way back to those blast invitationals, man, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Portuguese scene as well. So I definitely like to wave their flag every now and then. But today, you know, we've already seen some French players lose, Tom. It'd be a shame to have a French lower bracket. That's just what I'm thinking. It's going to be a super late lurk coming through. It relies on them getting that spike down. And so far, they're doing well to get control. But 10 seconds as the spike hits the floor. Geico already in for two. And now the trouble's brewing. Davies desperately looking for something. The flank has been caught. But Fatty gets no away with the kill. Another guy that all he needed to survive. Instead, Keiko takes all four. Yeah, it's always a challenge, uh, I guess, when you step from the tier one scene down to any other level of competition to figure out what level you should be bringing to that cast. And it's not just from a, an energy perspective or something like that. It's more so that like, you need to give the players respect, but you also don't want to oversell what they're able to do. I mean, it's unfair if a team is playing as a six out of 10 to come in and tell everybody they're a 10 out of 10. And it's tough to figure out, you know, when you're casting one of their games, when you're looking at their VODs and feeling like things won't line up, what to bring to the table. I think it's been something that we've sort of come into most of the games wanting to be much more relaxed, much more chilled out and, and have fun with it. We want to play to the level of the game, right? So if the game ends up being incredible and there's great counterplay and there's amazing thought behind it that's being executed well, then you can pivot and switch. And at this point, 
I think it's another save. 20 seconds on the yeah. clock. Oh, they're gathering up to move. And then the flank comes through from Mystic. He just walked through that mid smoke and Never picked mind. up three. Save, push garage, it doesn't matter. Mystic made the choice for them. Decent job initially. Enzo's also been tagged. Oh, this is aggressive from Bandy. Maybe one of the most optimistic attempts, but it's because his teammates are just defusing, sticking them oh! all the way. It's the spam through, though. Alongside an aftershock, it's going to wipe everyone out. Fizzy entry out of that. There's so much to be done from this squad and so many players that were alive down to the 2v1. But Davey's the one. No more smokes online for him. That one's going to fade pretty soon. Defuse, well, it's not easy to find. Eight seconds, the round will be over before he's able to smoke it up again. And there it is. Magnum to deal the final bit of damage to put it 13 to 6. A great opening map here for Apex. In the Saw's map pick, Locked right? there's got to be so much more comfort there for this squad. <laughs> this is the one that they could prep for. They thought they were going to see Ascent in this series. They were sorely mistaken, but I'm sure they knew they were going to be playing on Lotus. I don't know if they would have expected it so soon, and I don't know if they would have expected it as a map that could send them into the lower bracket. That's exactly it. The pressure is most definitely on. Still, again, though, this is the thing with Apex. They're so good at just having the players in the right place at the right time. It's almost like they can see where their opponents are. Four people. All of these fights become so much easier for Apex because of how well drilled they are as a team. And it's the reason you see players like Kaiko go, oh, I could try and get killed with the Blaze Storm here. Or I just fall back. We're 5v4. I know we win these. I know we win these because we're just good at trading and good at putting our utility into the right place. The ult going to be used. That's into their spawn. We've seen Mystic commit to them. He's done it again. Ah, and he's got the reward. No, oh, Davi. He was hoping Tamashi would take the kill. <laughs> Realized a little late that his buddy was dead. I don't know how. He has such a high success rate of committing. This is like 2020 Valorant. And a few kills for Apex. So I've been such an incredible team to watch shredding through a lot of their opponents. But Apex at 12 to 11 might just be about to put the final nail in the coffin. They've dulled the blade of Saw and left them down to that lower bracket. On how Apex looked, the reality is 17 wins in a row. It's hard to criticize that level of gameplay. We've seen this roster get better and better over time. Uh, it's always been a goal of Enzo's to be the best, but it's never been a goal of his to be the best today. These are players that don't mind if you don't win that tournament today or tomorrow, as long as you can win it. And I think they're getting the reward for that sort of mentality. But for me, it has to be Apex that's making it through. I think their level of play is unmatched right now. 17 win streak coming into this playoff section. It's hard to argue with those statistics. They've already beaten who I would say is the second best team in this qualifier as well. So the reality is, I think the only people that can get in their way are themselves at this point. Uh, we are back in the venue. It's day number two. We are against Ascend in upper finals today. So we have to prepare for the game because we don't have much time to prepare. But our analysts uh, did a good job uh, so we can understand how they play. So I'll be analyzing game for them, helping prepare them for their next matches. Uh, yesterday I worked on watching the Ascend versus Jetmites game after they were done playing. Um, to help us prepare for the game for Ascent today. When you see their comp, they have Astra, they don't have triple smokes. So they really cannot uh, full AMA. So the thing that they do, they take dish, then they go back, they gather up and they go somewhere. So preventing dish is going to be really good for us. So Jet, Rich and Fade, the three of them, core players. Astra lurking, Killjoy lurking. No, okay. Okay. But I know, I know, I know, I come to it. When they do our anti eco, they go one through one they're on the map, and the Fade is amen. So Astra joins the core. That's the only moment where Fade is actually amen. But just remember, if you see the Jet and the Rich, these two, it's the core. The spike is on Fade or Rich. Just. I want to focus on us, not too much on the notes, because it's going to be a <coughs> game where we need to rely on our basics, yeah. I think being proactive on the map is what's going to win us the map. Bringing the fight to them is going to win us the map, because these guys, we need to make them shake.
Oh man, I've been waiting for this matchup the entire game. I bet everybody else as well, right? We've been waiting for these two behemoths to face up against each other. And now finally in Berlin, we get to do just that. Apex yeah. coming in as so many fans' favorites to win this whole event, but Ascend are on a just otherworldly rise as well. Their gameplay yesterday was absolutely fantastic, and today is going to be an absolute treat to Everybody on the stands can greet these teams with me. It's Apex and Ascend, everybody. Let me hear you make some noise! Fights for Brody on a different angle, elevated as well. Little Bro going for the defusal, and Brody takes care of a kill at the same time. Multitasking, Brody ends up dropping by the end of it, so Ascend down in numbers. But still, the spike planted for them. Both players drop, and his buddy alone gets a couple of kills by the end of it, but there's plenty of time to get this defuse underway, and it's gonna be Magnum to stick it in the end. With everything to do against five and Apex, they're coordinated. They don't care. Alive though, make sure he had a life too. And then maybe there's an opportunity here because they've even the scales are 2v3. Monster finds one for the tally himself. That's for alive. Runs out of bullets. And it's Kiko to get the finishing point in the end with seven points of health. You tag onto Enzo. Oh man, if alive keeps on hitting shots like this, this is going to be a sense round around which really shouldn't be theirs. Let's see if this push is accurate from Apex with three players left. They're left into a chokehold into the meat grinder. They turn into mince meat, but Magnum is able to save the day at least for a little bit. Spikes out in no man's land. Smokes are lasting for a little while. Is there a gap in that smoke? He still gets passed. Oh man, 10 points of health though, right? A pistol shot anywhere on his body still does the work. Left. And there you have it. Monster delivering the final blow to the back of the chest of Magnum. And so it's going to force him out into the open. Little does he know, Masashi is actually running forwards. Places a bullet between the eyes, and now he's got full sight control. Now he's got to stick the landing though, and with the nano swarms, it's going to be difficult. Ascend, look to get that speed diffuse going, and they're going to have to pressure Magnum here one by one. They waltz out of the nebula. Can they stick the defuse? I it. think he can. They run out of bullets, and Ascend secure it. And the rest from Ascend start to move forward. Enzo drops straight away. They start to drop like flies. Ascend slapping them outside of existence. Mystic tries to hold on for a little longer, but he doesn't have enough bullets. Alive, surely to the face. And that's Ascend for the first time this game, finding the lead. Ascend have the momentum now. As the response, tower is going to be open. Actually, check out where Monster is playing right on the right side of Dish. It was oh my swinging God. around the corner. Ascend are ripping them to pieces. And this time it's three, and they know exactly where he hides. An accurate shot by life puts an end to that, and little by little, Ascend get closer to closing out this map. And they turn right back into the B side. Ten Brody seconds, is there. Ten, ten seconds. seconds. And they're all solo. A bullet anywhere on their body would do it for them. But he doesn't take the fight. This might have costed them the fight, but no! Brody has got it all secured! This could be it. This could be the end. Magnum. Every single clutch he had, he couldn't secure it. He's got to do it now. Not going to do it. Ascend, win the map pick. 1-0 against Apex. Right. First off, on the fucking timeouts, please start listening to me. I'm telling you, I'm telling you two timeouts when they take it. I'm telling you exactly what they're going to do. I'm telling you what you need to do. Please just follow, the, follow my call. We don't need to be fancy. We just need to do simple stuff as a team. You're going to into a stack and you're gonna fuck them. Now, the macro, we don't change it. Default is working perfect. Don't change it. Don't need to push into them. Don't need to be fancy. Just play simple. Play as a team and we're gonna fuck them. Everything is good. Protocols, we have everything set up. Don't change the macro. Listen to the timeout calls. That's all I have to say. Everything else, we're doing really good. You're, we're playing well. Don't get affected by the result. Just keep on playing your game. Don't freeze up at all. There were a couple of rounds where I, I don't hear people calling. But now it's our playground, yeah, Kevin. Yeah. And now it, then it's Lotus. So we know it's uh, rarely it happens that we lose them up. But this is the big games, yeah. We're gonna lose them up. Yeah. I so it's see. fine. Yeah. Play your fucking game. We're so much better than them. Let's go. Let's go for a hello. We either play your game now or we play again tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, let's play our game, have fun, do the simple stuff, and we destroy them, yeah? yeah. yeah. Let's go. You are now in the presence One, two, of Apex! For Apex though, X-Warrior and Ender, they have a chance to come back on Haven.
They absolutely do. This is their home ground. This is where they we expect them to sort of draw things back in their favor and where Sen might struggle a little bit, especially on that attack. Uh, up against four, this is so tough. Mystic, up close into the smoke. The moment you enter, you're a dead man. And that's going to mean that Apex win the first pistol of this map. Look, lockdown came through, but there's counteraction with that Hunter's Fury, which allows Kiko to move inwards. They can turn it all around themselves. And now it's a two-on-two two. monster, isolated. They know where he is, but gets the job done against Magnum. And he delays it by so much. It allows Masashi to reposition. Yes, he drops. But is Masashi in a good one? Kiko reads it, knows exactly where his opponent is, but goes directly for the spike because he's read Masashi falling back. Goes for the touch, Recon shows him, goes for the swing, Kiko! Come as ever, reads it, defuses, that's the win for Apex. Not with the spike though, so he's just in this position, Musashi in hell will not be expected. He's got the info, he knows exactly where the TP has come across, and that's exactly where Asen are going to try and isolate him. 20 seconds, this could end with just a good stop of the plant going down. Magnum's got a lockdown for guarantee. But there's no time for it, there's no time for it. It they could have come to go. In. They have to go for the spike part, but Masashi is there holding it out. Spike, now fully under control of Asen. There's, there's no time! Effects. Have to move on forwards, can't get to the spike on time. Brody, how was this time? Are you kidding me? Seconds and he gets it done. Monster regressing, but the timing isn't right. Shadow brings out his weapon, the spray counteracting it again onto the site. The spray is so good, no one can defuse. But Alive is sticking it once again, throws down a cloud burst to keep himself alive. But he has no time. He's got to get it down now. He's got to defuse it right here, right now. And he's not able to do it. This is it, you guys. A spot for the grand finals. The winner of this map will be going straight there and earning a massive advantage of those two map bands in a, grand, uh, in a best of five. That's exactly what happens. In the meantime, Ascend are trying to bait them over to the seaside. The real fight commences towards B, and Kiko is there again. He's everywhere, omnipresent. And Apex, full control, poised. But it's 2v5, they lost the last one. But rounds like that don't repeat themselves too often. Shadow with a triple ends the round. But they have to deal with a lockdown. And I'm, uh, uh, and they're I think, all getting caught by this. Uh, Four players detained. Are, are you, you kidding, kidding me? me? How does Monster get hit by that outside of B? Mystic is farming. Mystic is cleaning up. Everything belongs to him. For a second there, I thought he was even going to go for the knife. The BM is real, but no, they want to guarantee it. They want to make sure it all goes in their favor. The smiles just say it all. And Enzo all by himself with the Odin. Enzo with the Odin. Shock darts two to try and play the time. Absolutely, he gets one down, and now it's down in one-on-one. -on -one. Another shock dart, he's got the lineup down. But Brody aggresses, Enzo reads it, and it's the clutch by the captain of Apex. And the live is the only one standing up against him. One kill onto the tally, but he's got a lot more to do and no time to do it. Attempt for another time, but no defuses going his way. Apex undefeated, roll up to the grand finals, awaiting for the final challenge. One step away from VCT. Obviously, we have lost only one game and we had to learn from our victories. And to learn from victories, you need to have a process in the team. Having a process means that everyone has to contribute and listen and be open to criticism. Even though you win rounds, even though you win games, there is always a lot of things to improve. There is a lot of things to, to work on. It could be the communication, it could be how you move on the map, it could be the composition, it could be a lot of things. And because Valorant is a game where a lot of things matter. We know that our end goal is to win Ascension. And if you want to win Ascension, you have to be as good or maybe even better than a VCT team. Like we told it on the first few days, if we want to beat these tier two teams, we have to be better than the tier one teams. So what we have created here is a, a team, an environment where everyone can share what he wants to share and uh, everyone is really open to criticism. And by doing that, we just improve with each other. Grand Finals Day, I'm pretty hyped. Um, we are all warming up, warming up. I'm working on some special stuff for uh, Gentlemates. I think Gentlemates play better than uh, they usually do. They're improving. I like to see them improving day by day. And I'm just looking forward to it because if Gentlemates play better, like it's, it's, it's so good. Like It's going to be a challenging game and uh, I like those. I really like those. I'm pretty confident. I think we are all confident. I think we're all hyped. 
in the room. Like we're getting ready for the moment. Today I can feel the good vibes, the good energy. Uh, I can actually feel it, uh, and it's always a good sign. So I'm looking forward to play. I want to play. I'm uh, feeling fine, a little bit stressed because uh, it's an important match. But yeah, I'm actually like excited to play there. Really excited to play there at the stage. I'm confident. I mean, yesterday was nice. Nice, nice little break for us um, to reset and watch them play. Yeah, let's. Um, what we have to do is just keep our cool and just play our game today. Now there's no rivalry. They're, they're just, just fun. Actually, I am convinced that all the work that we've done for six to seven months is really efficient and it's done. And now it's, it's just fun. It's time for 10 players to walk down the tunnel and enter the Coliseum. For five, this will be the end of their road. For their opponents, the journey is just beginning. With a record of 25 and one, you knew that they were gonna be here. Time to introduce your first grand finalists. It's Team Apex. Apex. With over 300 maps played, he's been at the top, now fighting his way back there. The controller clutcher himself, Mystic! defining game for one of these two teams. Again, you know, so much on the line here, Mike. A best of five now in front of them. These maps could literally be life-changing now. Yeah, absolutely. This, this basically writes the script for the entirety of next year for yes. these teams. Packed house here. Everyone waiting to see how this affair truly comes down. To kick things off, it will be Apex on that attacking side. Gentlemates try and hold them back, and it's a big start. Shadow already going to draw blood, and that's Whalers down. And now Bears and the Tank trying to make something happen for themselves, but the likelihood is looking pretty poor here. Perfect work from Apex. Starting things off incredibly well. Does get overwhelmed. Logan, great work on the first. Following towards the site. Now you've got the Tank. Clears Mystic down to two now. Magnum and Shadow are going to be asked a whole lot here. Have they got anything to do? Shadow overwhelmed. Gentlemates clearing the site. Look at the utility that they've got to play back with. Rolling the tank down. is situated with big impact. If they try and stick around the site, they are screwed. And they've stayed way too close. And now here comes the cleaning crew, but Magnum trying to make the most of it. Logan's going to take him down. It's a quick trade out. And look at the site clear coming in. The tank again. It's steamrolling these guys. Paranoia sent They're going to try and work their way through from CT. Four players going in now. Got to clear on through this. Adenzo finding value. Shadow there as well. Making something out of nothing. Whaler's now pinned down. Overwhelmed. He tries to bail him out, but Shadow gripping on for the 1v1 now. Shadow has no idea. Attack ass is behind him. Heartbreak of the highest variety. It's 12 now for Gentlemates. This is only map one. Pico and Enzo trying to desperately take a couple of big steps here. Tap on the spike, trying to draw the attention. Draws out the Hunter's Fury. Going to just try and take a little bit of the damage. Bayer's going to find it. one. It's done. It's map one. The upset begins. Cut punch to Apex as oh, yeah. well. It's start a wake up. Off, the double ban coming through for the best of five. And you start off a map down. We never played like this. We never played like this. We're saying we're chilling. We're saying we're cool. We're saying we're not stressed. But it doesn't show it. Let's fight. Like, everyone is part of it. I'm part of it. We are too static right now. It's normal to be challenged on the final, guys. It's never yes, gonna be yeah. easy. It's never gonna be never easy. Going to yeah? be easy. One, two, Apex! Apex, they're a little bit wounded right now, but this is a marathon and not a sprint. Pansy and Hypog, they have a chance to bring this back. They do have a chance, but they better get hold of this game now because the bar has been set, right? The challenge is there. Both sides, they're just willing to brawl it out. But the adjustment going to come in. They're going to retake that space. They're up for the fight. This could be ridiculous. The flash almost there, but turning in time. Kiko turns back and takes down two with him. Mystic once more. Paranoia sent and he's going for it. Oh, it's it's perfect from Mystic. Up in their faces. This bird not going to find as much value as they'd like. Logan School is still going to catch one. A second. And they're being held. A third. Logan raining in fury. And Takas is there. Apex, I believe three ultimates available, but Jeez. the purchase will suffer. I'm seeing two Bulldogs, a Spectre, a couple of gaps in utility. It's only really the Hunter's Fury is. Trying to make magic here. Bayaz overwhelmed, Mystic still stands. Okay, Sight looking much better now. Plants looking ready. 
numbers advantage, you've got to argue. Jetro oh. Mates with an advantage here. How has Takas found that? I couldn't tell you, but he still wants a bit more. Still hungry from that last round. Famished almost, but he gets taken down. Mystic, Kiko in combination. Now a 2v2 in a tank and whalers. Are you going to shut down the account now or can? Apex, hold on. The 1v1, they've held it. Another round, another go. They're not done again. Time to save, boys. Whalers, this time, are overwhelmed, outdone. They are holding on to this uh, vice like grip once again, containing, and they weather the storm against all those ults. And up to 10 now for Apex. Double digits. They've done the legwork here in the second half. But it takes one lapse of concentration, one error, one mistake, one moment for maybe Enzo to take a break and it doesn't go so right. So do not think it is just plain sailing yet. Yeah, it's OT or it's back three. So Shadow's cracked through on the first, taking down the tank, but Whalers is still on the site. Looking for that player to peek through the smoke. He finds him. That's Shadow down. The follow up as well. It's all on Enzo, the hero of his last couple of rounds. The one who's kept Apex in this. He's still firing off. Two more to locate. Two more to put in their grave and the spike not in hand. With 20 seconds, he has to find Whalers. He has to deal with Logan. You can already see a Whalers touch. He's TPing out. Oh my word, nastiness from him. 10 seconds now, Enzo. There's no good option anymore. No safety to be had. He knows he has to make a poor situation. He has to try and make it work and it's not there for him. Gentlemates, get across the line here. Map two is theirs. And this is when the worries begin. I was stressed in the beginning of the day, but now it's over. No stress. We need, just need to wake up, go outside, take, take some fresh air, go to the toilet, and we, go, and we fuck them after that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, we're on, let's go. so much better on yeah, Let's go. go, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Let's go. 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 Really, really stressful. Yeah. I don't know what uh, what I can do to, to help him out. But he needs to calm down. Let's see what I can do. Remember what we did in Moscow? Huh? After the first uh, map on official? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can he be the difference maker once again? Can Apex make their last stand here to run the gauntlet of what requires a reverse sweep in this series, Lauren. Bears needs to close this gap and faster. Magnum's done the wiser. Oh dear, the flash is not bad either. Gonna catch him enough and he's gonna probably get this halfway. Mystic needs to make his move. He's gotta do something about this one. Drawn away, he's gonna get the frag! And the defuse is gonna be his as well. Gentlemates off to the start. They might break the hearts of Apex. Concerning look coming out of Enzo there. Till of Enzo here. He's just going in. He's a madman. He's, he's, he's just absolutely unleashing fury. Goes a little too deep on it. He's a great player, but this might be out of the realms of reality even for him. The spike deep within the hands of Gentlemates and Bears' his position. Bloody hell, the tank is off to a belting start. But you know now, in this map, in map three, this is the reality of the situation. There is no maps after this if you can't get past it. It doesn't matter how good you were throughout that regular season. It's still just one game away. Now it's one map away. Utilized it from here last time. Yeah, yeah, Logan was pinched and that's your second detain as well. But dealt with this time. Uh oh, that flash. Oh, Enzo doing so well to be able to navigate around this. That pressure is insurmountable. And double it down, the triple it down. It. How did Enzo get that? Oh. Oh. Again, it's the one that when you look at the kind of percentage offset, so you know, one map sitting so favorably to a team, this is the one that is really firmly in the hands of Apex. This has to be rebuilding for Apex, right? Get that confidence back on the side, get them feeling out the game a little more. Enzo is dragging them, kicking and screaming yeah, through the series. A hero time and time again, even in a 2 0. Apex have to pick up the pace. If he catches the cross on secret, there's something to be said about this. Hold on. He's navigated past the first. Now, Wingman can make a problem of this. He can start the defuse, so he has to deal with this. Both flashes now in hand. Gives away the game, but he gets half. 
Dizzy doesn't connect. He finds one. He needs one more. The man's been good for it before, but now this is the time to do it. Can he take him to 12? Oh my God. He absolutely can! Bayer's the man of the hour! He's good for two, Lauren. Every single time. Gentlemen, on the brink. Map and series point here. VCT point. How much does he get on this? There's Util, that's about it. Stop the first line. Takas is there though, finding and drawing blood. High flash to follow, and the tank's now going in. Shallow on the line here, tucked in towards CT. Mystic unable to make much of a difference yet though. Still waiting this out, the flash catches, and the tank goes in. He's got him dead, down to three now. Oh, and the tank's still going. It's all done. Gentlemates have made it. The big league's calling their name against all expectations. Welcome to VCT EVA. This is wild, Mike. I can't believe they've been swept in the ground. All this hard work from uh, from everyone putting this in, like we all had had, a, had one goal in mind, and everyone put everything aside to to get here. And we know we were one of the favorites to get into this event, and it puts us under more pressure. But today, nothing was working out, and uh, gentlemen, they showed up, and we've been showing up the entire year, but not today. But today was where it counted the most, so uh, there's no second chances, there's nothing for second place. Yeah, it's, this is the end for us, and uh, being so close, uh, yeah, that hurts. For me, this, this team was special, it's always going to be, that's all I can say. We've done an amazing job this whole year, and it's been a pleasure. To share this year, this year with you. Like it's impossible to win every match. Like it's literally impossible, and unfortunately, we fell short today. But like the effort and the chemistry that you guys had and the work you put in, like we could not be happier. And sometimes we're at the wrong end of a final, and competition is like this. But you should be really fucking proud. The team was special, and it still is. And the relationships which we built were really special. I feel like from day one of January until now, we all stepped up in so many ways. All of us. Like, I stepped up, we all stepped up, all the players, also all the staff, everyone stepped up. Like, we had everything we needed, we worked so hard and... Uh, Alright, today we lose, but... Uh, we lost as a team. We lost it together, I feel like. Like, 
it was dysfunctional today, but it was dysfunctional together. I don't have one guy to blame or something. I have. I, it was together. It was together. It, it was a team thing today, and they they also had a team thing today, and they won because of that. And and that's it. And we move on. And these moments, uh, this is what shapes us as as men, as humans. I mean, that that's life. We finished second, which is impossible to even imagine seven months ago when I spent with Ito two weeks in a row on the team speak trying to build a roster. Yeah, we're I like, remember. We're so even happy to get the roster together. Yeah. And the last thing I can say is uh, this year was maybe the best I've had, like with the best people around me and uh, uh, I just spent the year with the, all the people I love on Valorant the most. From the beginning, kind of felt on a journey that we were going all the way. And the closer we get, the more, the stronger the feeling came, got from me as well. That being so close sucks for everyone, but uh, there was no other team, no other players, no other staff. I wouldn't want to do that yeah, differently. So thanks guys for, uh, for putting in everything we had and we came very close, but uh, I've never seen an esports team before where there are no egos. You've acted like a team since uh, the first time I, uh, I met you guys. Um, I've tried to help you out with the tools that I consider necessary. Um, and um, the effort you guys have put in is, is incredible. So I'm incredibly um, grateful for being accepted by uh, you guys uh, for the short period of time I've been with you. I've learned more than I thought I was going to learn. Uh, you guys have showed me a whole other aspect of being an eSport player that I haven't encountered before. Thank you so much for uh, helping me become better. Let's do a huddle. Like it's, uh, we lose together and we win together. Today we lost together and it is what it is. push out, we will join hands, but I will do it whenever, it's gonna take time. Huh? Can we? You lead the IGL mate, you lead it. Guys, I want to hear the loudest go fly for Yeah. I love you all well, nice. Can I join in? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> 